Uh, hello, welcome back to Monster Train. My OBS froze when I started the recording. I should probably just reset, but I'm not going to. Hope you're doing well today. I'm doing fine. It's 11.30. Still got my coffee. I woke up a little while ago. I've been, I've been getting into a habit here. Wake up, spend like 30 minutes looking at Twitter, and then begin Monster Train. It's not so bad. Hope you're doing well today. I'm doing fine. Uh, I do have something I wish to talk to you about today. If you did not... If you are not up on the times, if you have not read the uh, the channel post, I did open memberships for the channel. I talked about doing it a little while ago. Uh, so, if you want to see a more more in depth my thoughts about it, you can go read the community post I put out. Uh, but in short, if you want to join the channel, it's a really weird way to say it, but I can't say subscribe because, like, you know, YouTube subscription different than Twitch subscription. Uh, anyway. If you want to join the channel membership, you can. Uh, there's two tiers. I will I'll occasionally I'll do member shoutouts, but it's not going to be every video. And if you do not want to join, you will not be missing anything. My content will not change. It's just an extra way for you to kick some money my way if you want to. And if you don't want to, please do not feel obligated. I am. I don't want you to feel like you have to or anything like that. You won't be missing anything. But my full thoughts about it and everything are over on the. Uh, community post, you can go check it out, and I think I'm gonna try to bring back community posting more. I kind I did like two polls and then forgot, but you know, that's that's what's new. That's what's coming up. I mean, I, actually, they should be live now, so uh, I will not be talking about them a ton. I won't be like uh, plugging them every video, but every now and then I'll just be like, hey, don't forget if you want to join the channel, you can join the channel membership. Feel free, because you know, it'd be cool, or it is cool, I should say. I, uh, oh, I have to clear my throat one moment. I paused for that. All right, anyway, let's get rolling on Monster Train, shall we? Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Awoken, Exile, Stygian, uh, Rage, Spell Shield, Chased, Razor Sharp, Ice Tornado, Bramble, Lash. That's fine. It's, uh, like, it's absolutely okay. I mean, it's better than fine. Razor Sharp Edge is a very good starter. I will probably play Root Split Mask. Over Tethys' scales. Root Split Mask, in my mind, it's like a top 5 artifact, so I'll give it the respect it deserves. And I do think that Root Split Mask does very well with Bristling. I think Cultivate does really well with Razor Sharp Edge, though. But Bristling does really well with Bramble Lash, so... I think that both of these are absolutely fine. I think that you can play either one and win. I'm gonna go Cultivate because of Chase Seraph making Spikes a little bit worse, but I really think you can do either one. And we will take the artifact. We're strong sketches. Now, Gabriel has been doing a little series on his channel, uh, fellow Monster Train YouTube creator, if you're not aware. Uh, he's been doing a series where he starts every run with sketches, like he's got the modifiers on for it. And the point of the series is that you can win any run with sketches. It's pretty cool. I've been watching it. And so a part of me is like, hey, I should try that. I should try winning every run with sketches when I see it. I'm not going to do that here because I think it's really bad. But I, I do have a little more respect for sketches now after watching those videos. I will say that. I've gained a little bit of respect for sketches. But I think that here in a run with Root Split Mask, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. But, yeah. Do I want spikes here? It's interesting because I have root split mask. I think I don't. Ultimately, what this run's gonna come down to is... Mm. Oh, Ice Tornado's frozen. Yeah, I can play this. I have to not play Ice Tornado, or not play Foregone Power on the next combat, but otherwise this is fine. Yeah, we just wait. Don't waste my train steward here. Or rather, don't waste my melee weakness here, that's what I mean to say. And then just end our turn because we don't want to discard Ice Tornado. So this is the turn where it gets a little more interesting. I think the play is to Ice Tornado middle floor. And I think before that... Hmm. Is the play to Razor Sharp Edge the 5 1 and then Ice Tornado the next turn? I don't think so. Yeah, this is the bad outcome, but it's okay because I can just Frostbite through it. It's not so bad. I get hit for 23. Oh, yeah, because there's no days, of course. Right. 
there's only days on the first wave, not every wave. This is not light skip. If this were, uh, I would be feeling pretty silly right about now with cultivating sentient. So it's a good notice uh, for me there. Good thing to look at and go, oh yeah, uh, do not play Light's Gift in this run, because it ruins the run. Don't play Quick, don't play Light's Gift. The ping is pretty good, right? Having the ability to do 3 damage to an enemy without having to spend my Razor Sharp Edge is very good. However, Razor Sharp Edge is also a ping, but it also has benefit later on. So, ultimately, I think that's a pretty easy take. I am strongly going to try to not play Incant in this run. I'll take Flash Freeze because it can help us win an, uh, an otherwise close boss. Yeah, so I'm looking for Animus of Will or a Sweeper here. The good thing about Awoken is there are three uncommon units that are winning run, winning the run for you. I think Shattered Shell, he's fallen pretty heavily. I think he's one of the weakest, but... He's still not terrible. I will need to find some answer to keeping him alive. That's a later problem, though. I don't really need this money. I should minus one Razor Sharp Edge. There's no way that I'm putting two upgrades on all three of these, so... Because, like, in my mind, this is one of those things that's just incorrect from me, but I can, I can point it out to you and you can overcome it, perhaps. In my mind... Hang on, give it, a, give it a second. I think it's fine. Uh, in my mind, I see Razor Sharp Edge and I go, oh, I don't want to give this a minus one. I have three Razor Sharp Edges and I go, oh, I don't want to give this a minus one. What if I want to give it Intrinsic Holdover? Obviously, that's wrong. Because I can't give all three of them Intrinsic Holdover, right? That's a that's an obvious no chance. Oh, foregone power. It's okay, the goal here, uh, putting all the Frostbite down is right, because I'm reaching the point where Shattered Shell one-shots this entire wave, which is what I was going for. And then we can restore away some of this, and we'll have Ice Tornado to even out this wave if I need it. Do I need it? Uh, yeah, it's good. Okay. The increase in damage taken was a little scary, but I should stop playing Razor Sharps now because of the spikes coming at us. I should just heal through, and then we can Ice Tornado on the next turn. If we need. Spikes should not be a problem. Yeah, we're good. Very strong start. Happy with how this one's running. Ice Tornado putting in a lot of work. One of the better starters to have, to be sure. How many Razor Sharps is too many? Is it four? I don't think so. I'm not going to talk myself into Wildwood Staff this time. Not into Chase Seraph, I swear. Although, never mind. Guardian's Amulet is actually probably not the worst idea ever. Okay, so this run has a few problems. The first problem is... How do I win Relentless against the Divinity? How do I beat the Divinity? But before we get into that, how do I beat, like, Talos? Well, Talos is fine. Uh, big attack. Sentient has a lot of HP. Heal through. How do I beat, like... Crystal Cloak? Or no, how do I beat Self-Made Harpy? Actually, I don't really see any... Oh, no. How do I beat Sower of Sorrows? That's the real killer. How do I beat Sower of Sorrows? That's the boss that I need to be prepping for here. And I don't think it's all that good to help me with that. It's just a question of, like, how, how am I going to beat these bosses that are going to put pressure onto my Shattered Shell? And one of those answers can be Guardian's Amulet, but it is a little weak, I feel. Step 2, it's like, eh, gotta play a lot of these. I think I'm going to skip, but it's close. I cannot play Titan Sentry. I can play Husk Hermit. That gives me the base HP that I feel I need for Shattered Shell. I'll take him. I, like, because he's not any worse than Shattered Shell. So I'll take the Husk Hermit and we'll just sit on it for a little bit. Multi Strike, okay. Animus of Speed, Husk Hermit, okay. So, here's your question here. Which, uh, what do you want to do here, right? You have an 840 or you have a 340. Okay, so it is just better to put the Shattered Shell into the Husk Hermit. I think my damage scaling is fine with Cultivating and four Razor Sharps, so I just need to give the Husk Hermit or the Shattered Shell enough base HP to live. But we can go the other direction here if you look at it. So there's only one thing that's different about this. If I want to go... This, this is actually a pretty difficult choice because the better infusion for Shattered Shell is Animus of Will. Definitely. And so... Yeah, okay, so here's the deal. 
Technically speaking, Shattered Shell into Huskarmid is better than Huskarmid into Shattered Shell. You have a 340 versus an 840 Huskarmid, or not an 8, yeah, an 840. Huskarmid passes on his entire body, right? Plus his effect. However, I'm going to give up the 5 attack on Huskarmid to put multi strike onto Shattered Shell in case there is an Animus of Will at Talos, because Animus of Will is significantly better. And the loss of 5 attack doesn't really trouble me that much. So that's that's that one. Now, Incant Armor 2 is okay, but I think we're going to go... It's like, it's a piece, but I think I'm going to leave it open for now. Oh, I could just take it and then we could do the infusion. Or I could reroll. Let me check the artifact. I'm going to grab this. I'll go... S uh, drop Cage... Drop cage turns restoring retreat into a win condition. As much as I don't like that. Sinner Salve. Nah, you know, it's really hard for me to say drop cage isn't the right pick here. Sinner Salve does very little, I fear. In armor too. I, you know, I guess at the end of the day the armor is fine. It's not like he's going to be tanking hits and healing. He's just going to need, like, the damage he's going to take is going to go through the armor. So it mitigates it a little bit, and then we can restore, like, the two or three that he takes away. Okay. Yeah, I think it's fine. I don't think it's, like, crazy good. Usually armor conflicts. And the reason I want to do that is in case there's, like, a tiny stone here. Ah, little... little Railforger's hammer for ya. You could go Frozen Nostalgia here, right? Is there anything stopping me? Nah, right? Because what is it? It's a two and a two? It's a four? It stops you from playing mid-floor, but that's fine. I don't see anything bad with this right now. Maybe something will will pop up and I'll go, oh, whoops. But I like to take things like this because it's infrequent that you get to see them. And I can't see a downside to it right now. So I'm going to want to be playing top four because of Root Split Mask giving us a little extra time anyway. I don't see a good reason to not do this. Oh, you're the wrong guy. That's okay. I don't really want to lower the Sentience HP, so I'm not going to play the Razor Sharps. That, that was the wrong guy. I don't believe it. Now we have a good reason to play Foregone Power. I feel very good about this run overall. I think we're in a great spot. By the way, the, the big thing about the Frozen Nostalgia is that... Uh, it gives our it makes all of our restores formidable healing cards, and that's what I cared about here. I cared about each of these restores becoming good. Let's do a quick little look two four. Twenty-one and eighteen is thirty-seven. Okay. I have to ice turn into this bottom port. No wait. No I don't. That's not a haste combat. Sorry. I don't know why I was like a hundred percent in my mind I was like, oh this is the haste combat. I have to deal with the haste that's coming at me. No I don't. It's not going to kill me or anything, but that was my reasoning. It's okay, I'll live. It's just very firmly my B. Yeah, 50 times 2, throw a little frostbite at her, it's fine. I'll throw an ice tornado down or something. Like, tru truly, if you get to 100 attack on Talos, you're probably winning. Or rather, 100 damage per round. Or on power. Come on, man. If, you, if you're above 100 damage per round, you're probably killing Talos, so that's my philosophy. Also, the Incant Armor 2 offsets the minus 2 HP from Razor Sharp Edge on the turn you play it, which is pretty cool. Didn't think about that. Okay, now we're hoping for... A spike of the Stygian is okay. I think it's fine. It's like another one of those add it to the list cards. Animus of Will is, of course, very good, and we are looking for... Probably card draw. This is probably draw energy. It might just be draw draw. Never space though. Then we go left. Check the artifact. A little precious plating doesn't hurt. Don't mind a bigger buffer of my HP. But the idea of this run now is just spike of the Stygian. Oh, I forgot to remove the husk arm. It might be. We're gonna do the infusion now. Like we have spike of the Stygian. We have the incan armor too. We have the cultivating sentient. We have all of these little things working together. To make sure that Shattered Shell doesn't drop dead. And importantly, two of those things, being Cultivating Sentient and the Incan Armor 2, are guaranteed on turn 1. 
So it should be impossible for my man to pass away on turn one. So now we just have to get through the awkward middle phase. Heaven's Seal, there's no way an enemy sits on the top four for two rounds and doesn't die to my sweeper. Even a 150 I'm not worried about. Just have to not play Hot Skirmit. He was a good idea, but... And we don't play the Train Steward because he's going to take my melee weakness from me. Here we go. Shell, Razor Sharp, Razor Sharp. And we're good. Right, because with the melee weakness, we punch through the first wave. The melee weakness makes sure that Husk Hermit uh, starts his scaling off alongside the Razor Sharps. But we have so many Razor Sharps that I can't really miss. And... I kind of want to play Flash Freeze here on my own Sentient. I know it might seem crazy, but these restores are so big. I'm not worried about the 8765 she's going to take. It doesn't really concern me, and it gives a little more HP to Shattered Shell, who is now a 180 sweeper. Yeah, he's, he's doing 200. He, Shattered Shell is scaling at a rate without cultivating 3 that he needs to scale to kill, like, Divinity Waves, so... I'm feeling pretty good about this. It doesn't take long for everything to die here. Three regen. You could argue I should kill these guys on the bottom or on the floor here. You could argue it. I don't need to though. I feel great about this run. I feel very good. Quick coffee break. Today we're having a hazelnut creamer. Very good. I'm a, I'm a fan of hazelnut. I have no idea what it is. I know what it tastes like. You would, you could show me, you could throw, a, throw me, throw a hazelnut at my head. I would never know why you were throwing at me. No fucking idea. I'd go, what is this? An acorn? I think it looks like an acorn. Uh, and graft is okay. It's like technically never wrong to take this card. Uh, no, that's not true. There are situations where it's not good. Those situations are situations where you're drawing to ten anyway. But it actually just pays for itself. And if you give it a minus one, it becomes energy positive. The re but my feeling is you just kind of skip it because it doesn't do anything. It's not bad, it's just not good. And so you just kind of skip it unless you have a reason to take it. And the reason to take it here is because another source of healing in this run is good and it's 16 HP for free. And we can even give it a minus one. Now it's draw or energy positive. It's draw neutral as well. Plus 10 is like completely worthless with the locket. I'm just going to move on. Oh wow, this is so good. A plus 25? I mean, that removes all of the uncertainty of, oops, I might have just missed and had him die. Not that there was any uncertainty of that to begin with. We have two temples. So there's one thing I want to think about going into combat 5, and that's Crystal Cloak. I mean, I think it should be fine. I'll leave the train stewards in, because maybe they can take a round off of her. But ultimately, my health should be so high that it doesn't matter, actually. Now that I think about it a little more. Although, I don't have the money, so never mind. Not really a thought. Should have been thinking about Crystal Cloak two rounds ago. But self-made harpy gets farmed by Cultivate. Armor 15. Doesn't scare me. I'm really, I'm only really afraid of taking, like, multi-strike there, because the Sentine will get popped by the stealth, I fear. The Sentine, she's not, like fragile, but she's not invulnerable either. She's 80 HP, which is not a crazy amount. It's good enough, but it's not like, oh man, look at the sentient go. You know, it's like, fine. Forty times three is 120. This guy has like one, he's like 200 HP. Because of the cult, the harvest he gets from in front of him. He gets, what, 20 from that? Yeah, he's fine. No problem. Yeah, it's not Crystal Cloak, so I can just throw these train stewards out. I don't have to care about the armor. Damage output's so high. It's, uh, it's not close. And we, we have the Spike of the Stygian for the self-made harpy. I'm, I'm holding these Ice Tornadoes like I need to. I don't need to. I should be playing them out as well. We go and Graft, Restore. The Razor Sharps are always going to be the right idea. And then I want to ping the 10 twos off. Because I want to give the Sentient as much HP as I can. Oh, but also if you do 3x Sap, this enemy goes down to 0 times 6. It basically just gives you a free round by going 3x on the Sap. How did the Forkoff Power do that? That's crazy. How did it... 
How did it discard both Ice Tornadoes in a full hand? Orgon Power. What are you doing? Yeah, this deck draws a lot too because the Sentient has the built-in card draw. I don't think I need Ensnare here with Root Split Mask. This is a this is a run where if you take too many draw plus ones, you will end up just overdrawing. So I'm okay. Ice Storm. Ice Storm though. I actually don't think it's that good. I think Drain is better. I think uh, my damage scaling is so good that I don't need help from any source. All I need is to make sure I keep this, the Shattered Shell alive. So sapping the Divinity down, things like that are going to be the play. It's just like other little tools, right? I don't need to play this card every turn, but I play it like once or twice every few turns. It's going to make a difference on the overall damage output of the fight. I don't need any of this. I can't use Pyrestone Housing, which is why it's bad. You cannot go, because I took the plus 25 already. He's already got three upgrade slots filled. So let's just reroll. Sap tap is probably fine. This is, a, this is a card draw that can't overdraw you, which is cool. And then I will probably take energy off of that. Plus 10 piercing, not really that good here. Minus two is solid, solid for Ice Tornado. And then I need to take 15 in the next ring, and then 15 at the at the last ring, and we're good to go. Yeah, I mean, this feels feels very strong. I haven't really felt like I missed anything on this run. I hit every, I hit the multi-strike, I hit the animus, so well, everything's going very well. Good bosses. Not really a whole lot of considerations I had to make either. I am down to hit my own sentient here. The frostbite will wear off by the time it matters. And with the bonus healing, we can definitely heal through. Yeah, and Graph does give us energy, don't forget. I, the big thing I need to get in the habit of here is I need to get in the habit of letting Ice Tornado go. It feels very strange because you never let Ice Tornado go usually, but I just need to let it go. Also remember to, draw, uh, to heal first in the future. But stacking up armor chillin' really. I feel like this is one of those runs. This is a good run because I had a little bit of a confidence dip with Monster Train recently where I was losing runs I felt I should win. This is the sort of run that if I lose from this position it is just baffling to me. I cannot imagine it, right? Everything went perfectly right for me in this run. I'm interested to see, I guess. Like, in these runs I like to think about how you can lose, right? I like to look at this and go, because it's it's a very boring video, I think, if I sit here for the rest of the run and go, yep, well, we won. Yep, we won. Oh, this is over. Yeah, it's done for. All right, GG, go on. Like, at that point, you may as well just click off the video. Don't do that. I need the watch time. If you if you click off the video, hey, come back. Hey, wait, wait, wait. No, 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 don't go. No, but what, if, but what if, right? No, like, there's actually, it's extremely hard to imagine a circumstance that would kill me on this run. Be and part of that is because I've spent the remainder of the run thinking about how you lose, right? This is how you have to play when you get ahead now. Because if you if you make your... It, Monster Train is a game where you're often one or two major mistakes away from just dying, right? Sometimes it's harder to see what those major mistakes are going to be, but, you know. Like, if I accidentally play a Razor Sharp on Fel, then all of a sudden the run ends. But that's not really a way to lose, right? Because I would just reset and I would go, yeah, I don't know what I just did there. However... I digress. I think I go... I, I go for the artifact here. We're in a position where all we really have left to do is look for high rolls. Uh, these aren't good. I mean, Concussive Coals, it can be interesting because it lets Faulty Loader days go all the way up to the Pyre, but that would never happen. I think, like, maybe Concussive Coals actually is worth picking up there, but I have my doubts. Hold over. <laughs> Hold over for Razor Sharp is good. And then I want to give a mine. I'm just going to minus one all the Razor Sharps for sure. I'll wait on the money. When you're ahead like this, I think the best thing to do is to not spend uh, money and just wait because you can high roll artifacts in the future. Like, not spend on removals. There are other things that are worth spending on, of course. Yeah, how about Hold Over Spell Chain Razor Sharp Edge? So, the way that I can lose this run now is by playing Razor Sharp Edge too many times and killing my guy, but the Incan Armor 2 kind of offsets it. There were a few choices in this run that I kind of had to force myself to do. Uh, I really, and it's just me uh, 
sort of breaking bad habits, I guess, in, in this run, which feels good as well. Uh, what, what are they? Well, specifically, I think the one was the Incan Armor 2. I did not want to take Incan Armor 2 here. I really didn't want it. I, I can't tell you why, but I was like, it was it was hard to get myself to take that shit. But my Monster Train philosophy has been changing pretty pretty heavily lately. I feel like it's uh, I'm getting a better grasp on how to win the game consistently. Or not even win the game consistently. I'm getting a better grasp on how to win the game in runs like this. Like, I guess in the past, I always felt like everything you did was a single source. I always felt like, okay, this is my game plan for... Uh, uh, for like killing the waves and this is my game plan for surviving the divinity sweep and I think that that's sort of a holdover from the pre-DLC time that I never really kicked because before the DLC it was it was as simple as okay I have like crucible collector this kills Seraph for me I give this a few morsels this unit beats Seraph and then okay I have like I don't know what, what card would you use in the pre-DLC times to uh, kill double heavies I, I don't know, actually. I'll have to go watch some of my old content. I have no idea what I used to do, actually. Huh. Interesting. But anyway, in the in the pre-DLC times, you just kind of did one one or two things really well. Like, this plan scales forever and wins relentless. This plan uh, kills the kills the major kills the major bosses for me. Things like that. Now on the deal on the divinity, it's like okay, there's like 120 damage coming at me on these turns. I need to be ready in a lot of ways, and so it ends up being like because basically, I guess what I'm trying to get around to is one of the ways that I've lost runs in recent memory is like oh well, I have a self confused shattered shell that should win right? Well, no, not really. Or like alpha fiend oh alpha fiend he he's self infused ten per round that's enough right? Well no you need to give him a little more. You need to help your brother out you know. That's what I'm coming around on with Monster Train. It's like, it's helping me understand the game a little more. To pick things like, oh, well, Drop Cage could give me a Restoring Retreat and make that better, right? If I take Drop Cage, I can play Restoring Retreat and I can drop uh, drop the Divinity every, like, three turns and daze him, and that's good. Things like that are where you have to start shifting your mindset, I feel, with this game. And it's, it's interesting because I feel like every couple hundred episodes I have to go through this, like, really bad losing streak and then relearning phase. No wing steel, absolutely not. These are all really bad. I don't. I mean, Trader's Quill is, I guess, fine. It is technically good, but like barely. Oh, Mark of an Exile is the is the uh, the winner here. To say, I like for some reason I really wanted to say the piece de resistance, but uh, for but I could not bring myself to say it. I don't know what the hell that was. All right, I'm done. I don't want to remove anything else even. Happy where I am. Actually, I guess I could remove, like, one restore. Yeah, you might feel... Oh, no, you know what I should get rid of here? Hold on, sorry. My bad, one more thing. Ice Tornado. You might feel like I'm kind of going fast here, but these are choices that don't matter. This run is one regardless of if it's 21 or 19 cards, right? And that's another thing that I like to optimize in these runs. But this is more of a video optimization thing. I like to optimize, uh, like, completing the run, I guess. We're done here. This run has been won for a little while, so it's fun to kind of look at it and go, how do I finish the run up now? Yeah, this was actually a little scary without the Mark of an Exile, I think. I think the Sentient might have gotten sniped here in this combat, but now she's looking pretty solid. I don't want to play Ice Tornado. You can discard it, thank you. I do all... I, I'm also starting to notice that I feel like I'm talking more in this episode than I would consider to be normal. I don't know. You feel that way? I feel like when the runs get to be out of control like this, I just kind of feel like I have to keep going on the on the dialogue. But, you know, it's part of my philosophy, right? Just never shut the fuck up when I'm recording. I think it's part of the, uh, part, you, you know, you gotta hear me talk. Also, is my sentient okay? That Ember Drain might be... A legitimate issue. Cause yeah, there's a 50 banger coming at me here. Hang in there, Sentient. We got this. Stay strong. So we need to. My my shattered shell is fine. He need he no longer needs me to scale him. 
I need to now start making the trades that we have to make to keep the sentient alive, like that one. I'll play the Razor Sharps where it is worthwhile to do so. I should actually play Ice Tornado there for the chance to hit. Because this is a... like... What, what you might think here is, you might think, oh, well, obviously you just need more healing. No, that's not what's happening here. This is an uncommon combat. This is, this is not a usual combat. What's wrong with this combat? The only enemy that has been infused is this enemy. It's only been infused light wings every wave. That is not an expected outcome. That is a strange outcome. This is not how the run should look. I shouldn't have to consider, oh, what if every wave has a 50 damage menace on it? It's okay, it'll be fine, it's just, uh, this is an out of, out of uh, the norm sort of combat here. I shouldn't be concerned, but you know, it is, it's fun for Monster Train to say, here's another way you could lose it, here's 525 times twos. Oh, you think your sentient's gonna be fine? Oh, you didn't take quick because you can't play quick with the cultivating sentient? Here's, uh, like, roughly 300 damage in this combat from Light Wings. Fuck you. Now you know what, Monster Train? Fuck you. How dare you. How dare you. However, this does illustrate, because, like, the next turn, next combat's also going to have very high damage output, so this is not that shocking, but what this illustrates is our problem, our problem? No, our plan to deal with this problem. Uh, which is, if the Sentient dies entering Relentless, it doesn't matter because our Shattered Shell does a thousand damage and has like 200 HP, right? That's what this really illustrates, but in Graft, it kind of dug us out there a little bit too. I, yeah, and clearly I did not need another healing card because I lived on those. Shout out Frozen Nostalgia. Very good work. I don't think it matters uh, what they show me here. Because that was also through Faulty Loader getting broken because of the Chase Seraph effect. I think we should be 100% okay now. Yeah, my only real concern on this combat would have been uh, my Shadow Shell getting sniped over two turns, but I realize now that that's not even possible here. If anything, the Divinity helps us. Now, I don't want to take him to zero. That's the big thing. I do not want to take the Divinity's attack to zero, because I want him to cultivate me. That's 3-3 three, three per round I'm missing out on. But yeah, we're like, yeah, we're chilling. This is the part of the run. If I wasn't, if I didn't spend the whole run talking about Monster Train, I would have talked about something else with you here, but I don't really have anything to tell you in the short time frame we have left. What the, brother? Thank you. The brother is at me, my hands. Please hit the enemy. Appreciate it. Mm, I can go to zero here. It really, again, doesn't really matter, does it? I would say no. I am going to... I'm going to keep an eye on the sentient. I'm mostly just going to get in the habit of clicking healing cards onto the sentient. Because, yeah. She is at risk of dying. However, these are like the higher damage waves already going through, and she's not even below 100. So, ultimately... Ping off some backliners here and there. I do feel like Seraph. Yeah, this is the wave you gotta be afraid of. But I kept flash freeze for shit like this. I feel like that Seraph fight was a little bit skewed, but you know what? It's fine. You'll get him next time, Ice Tornado. Also, the Divinity's taking 800 per round. Sweep runs kill the Divinity a lot more consistently, I feel, because the Divinity is always there to get hit. Yeah, I mean, why not, basically? It's not like I need the Shattered Shell's uh, attack here. He doesn't need 30 more attack. Why don't- I'm not- I'm not gonna bother doing the math. Let's just be sure that I don't die to something weird there. There's a chance I draw Flash Freeze, etc, etc. It doesn't matter, just guarantee it, right? You can make suboptimal plays at this point to be 100% sure. Combat's over in the next round anyway. Alright, that's a GG. Good run, very solid. I know it just ends up being Cultivate plus Sweep, but... This is a very strong start to a very strong run.
Any run that starts with a damage scaling card, though, is going to leverage it pretty well, I, I tend to expect. So, we take those. I, I feel like I've learned my lessons to make sure cultivating sentient wins. Primarily, no light's gift, no quick. I don't need to write those down in the list. I think I have that one ingrained in my brain. Thank you, Monster Train. Very... Plain? Eh... Anyway, I didn't have a good final rhyme. I was looking for a word other than cool that rhymed with train. Very brain. Anyway, I'm not a rapper. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave me a like. Subscribe if you want to see more. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.